yours, Vivian. Well, go get him. Vivian Thomas had spent his life in a lab, following research conducted by others as a janitor and co-observer until his move to Johns Hopkins Hospital that placed him in halls no other African American had walked as an equal among white physicians before. Dr. Alfred Blaylock, the new chief of medical research and surgery at Johns Hopkins, had personally asked Vivian to assist him at his new position in his research lab. Blaylock was noted among the medical community, and Vivian was praised for his growingly impressive work in the research lab. For these reasons, Dr. Helen Tusig from Pediatric Surgery showed these two men a child with Blue Baby Syndrome. Blue Baby Syndrome occurs when the heart does not pump enough blood to the lungs. The decrease in oxygen in the blood results in a blue tint to the skin. Those affected are not destined to live long and are known as Blue Babies. At the time, surgery on the heart was a taboo in the medical community, but one look at that dying child made Blaylock and Thomas change their minds. They embarked on a mission to save these dying children. Blaylock appointed Thomas to the head of this new medical research, and at every failure he learned something new, something very different about this strange anomaly. Thomas would attempt to cut and move an artery from the heart and attach it to a blood vessel to allow a more direct route to the lungs. After countless failures, one test subject survived this experimental surgery, a dog named Anna. With her, Thomas had tested a new medical instrument he had created from a carpenter's tool, the Blaylock clamp. A portrait of Anna still hangs in the halls of Johns Hopkins Hospital today. With this one success, the surgery could begin. Their patient was a 15-month-old baby girl named Eileen Saxon. Her face was tinted blue and her arm was no longer than a doctor's finger. She would be the first. Blaylock called for his assistant. He called for Vivian Thomas. This would be Blaylock's first, while Vivian had done this procedure countless times. When Vivian arrived, Blaylock placed him on a stool behind his shoulder and asked for his directions. The surgery took three hours to complete, and all throughout it you could hear Vivian's steady voice guiding Dr. Blaylock's hand. When the clamp restricting the artery was removed, you could see the effects of the procedure immediately. A rosy color washed over the face of Eileen Saxon. When news hit the world that the doctors of Johns Hopkins Hospital had saved the life of an infant through open heart surgery, people flocked to them looking for help. Of course, one name was not mentioned in the paper. This black man who couldn't afford medical school had achieved one of the greatest medical accomplishments in American history. Vivian Thomas would continue to run the research laboratory at Johns Hopkins for 15 more years training hundreds of surgeons. His unacknowledged efforts in white society became highly appreciated among the minorities. He inspired people like Rowena Spencer, one of the first women surgeons, and Richard Scott, the first African American surgical intern at Johns Hopkins, to rise above the prejudices of society to succeed. Vivian Thomas never became a real doctor, but that didn't stop his involvement as the first ever African American to assist in the first ever open heart surgery. His portrait hangs in the hall besides that of Dr. Blaylock as a true prodigy to medical research.